Okay, so today we're going to work on solving quadratics by completing the square and also solving quadratics by using the quadratic formula. All right, so uh, I would like you to the, do the try this. Uh, so just put me on pause and give it a try and then come back. Okay, so let's see what you uh, all got. So it says to start off with, what is the standard form for a quadratic equation? So the standard form for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. All right, so a is the number that's in front of your x squared, b is the number that's in front of your x, and c is the number that's all by itself. It's your constant. All right, so it says put the quadratics in standard form and identify a, b, and c. So look at number one, three x squared plus five x minus two equals zero. That is already in standard form. So a is equal to three, b is equal to five, and c is equal to negative two. All right, number two is not in standard form. Uh, so we want to take this uh, x squared and we want to leave it there because it is positive x squared. So we should move everything over then to the left. So I'm going to add 2x minus 7. So the x squared comes first, plus the 2x, minus 7 equals 0. So your a is what's in front of x squared. So since there's no number written, it's really a 1. So that's 1. b is equal to 2, and c is equal to negative 7. All right, let's take a look at 3. I have negative x squared plus 6x is equal to 15. Now, notice your x squared is negative. That means I want to take everything on the left and bring it over to the right here. All right, so I'm going to add x squared minus 6x. Add x squared minus 6x. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 15. So a is equal to 1. 1, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to positive 15. Okay, so let's talk about completing the square. I'm just going to move everything up now. Right. Okay, so when we solve a quadratic equation using completing the square, you always want to make sure your quadratic starts off in this form. So... Number one would be put in the form x squared plus bx equals c. So notice where the c is. The c is over on the right. So it's not equal to zero unless your c is zero. Then um, you would have a zero over here, uh, zero still. Your b and your your bx and your x squared is on the left side. Now notice I don't have a in front of here. That's because your a has to be equal to one. That's why I got rid of the a. So let's put that over there. A has to be equal to one. So if it's not equal to one, you have to get rid of it. Uh, just get rid of it by either multiply, if it's a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal or divide everything by the whole number or the integer that's in front of x squared. All right, the next thing you want to do is you want to do one half of b, and then you want to square it, and then you add to both sides. Three, you want to factor the trinomial. Okay, this will not equal zero. This will... At this point, it will not be equal to 0. 4, rewrite as parentheses, parentheses squared, because you're going to have two of the same parentheses, equals a number. And then you go into square root both sides. Don't forget, don't forget the plus minus, and 6 will be to solve and then reduce. I mean, and then you'll have to, you know, look to see what the directions say. I mean, if it says to nearest tenth or something, then you're going to have to plug in your calculator, but it depends on what it says. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm going to move this all up. Look at the 
first one. All right, so we have negative x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So I notice there's really a negative and 1 in front. We can't have negative 1. It has to be positive 1. So I have to divide everything by negative 1. So I get x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals 0. Now I want to move the 2 over to the right, so I'm going to add 2. So I get x squared plus 4x is equal to positive 2. All right, now I'm going to do half of b, so half of 4 is 2, squared it, and I get 4. That just happened like that, and then I'm going to add it on both sides. So I get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 2 plus 4, and that is 6. And now I'm going to factor this side here. And when I factor this, this will always happen. You don't have to go through the entire process of master product because this will always happen. You get an x and an x. It's always going to be whatever sign was here. So th this number that goes right in here is always the number that you got when you did half a b. So here was half a b. When I did half a 4, I got positive 2. Since it's positive 2, I'm going to put a plus 2 in here. That will always happen. It's always the number you got when you did half a b. Since I have the same parentheses, I write using a square. To get rid of the square, you're going to square root both sides. So they cancel each other out. So I'm left with x plus 2 equals, don't forget the plus minus, square root of 6. Square root of 6 cannot be simplified, so I'm going to minus 2. x is equal to negative 2 plus minus the square root of 6. So I have two solutions. One solution is x is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 6. And the other solution is negative 2 minus the square root of 6. And these will always, uh, your two answers will always be, remember what's called conjugates. The sign in the middle is different. All right, let's try uh, the second one. And then as we go through the second one, I'll show you where you can kind of skip, uh, skip things so it doesn't take as long. And then you'll see why completing the square really is easier than the quadratic formula. All right, so I noticed in number 2 that it's not in the right form. Um, I have to move my 3 over, so my 3x, so I'm going to minus 3x. So I get 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. I notice that um, I have a 2 in front of my x squared, so I have to divide everything by 2. So I'm going to get fractions here. That, this, is, this is the reason why you have to be able to identify whether or not, when you solve a quadratic, whether or not you should use quadratic formula or complete the square. So notice that because I have fractions, I should not, I should not um, after today or after your practice tomorrow, um, you should have, you should be able to identify which process to use. This is not the best process because of the fractions. And, and you'll be able to tell right away whether or not you have fractions. Just noticing I have to divide everything by two, you're going to get these fractions here. All right, so I still need to add five halves to both sides to get it in the right form. x squared minus 3 over 2x is equal to 5 halves. All right, now I'm going to do half of b. b is negative 3 halves. So you can plug that in your calculator, but it's um, negative 3 fourths. Now you're going to square that, and you get not positive 9 sixteenths. And now you're going to add that to both sides of the equation. So I get x squared minus 3 halves x plus 9 sixteenths is equal to 5 halves plus 9 sixteenths. And, and then when I add 5 halves and 9 sixteenths, I get 49 sixteenths. Okay, now I'm going to factor this side over here. So let me actually just put this as red. And now I'm going to factor this side over here. So I get uh, x and x. What number did I get when I did half here? When I did half of negative 3 halves, I got negative 3 fourths. So that's what should be inside, negative 3 fourths. All right, so it's x minus 3 fourths squared is equal to 49 sixteenths. I need to move everything up. Hold on. Okay, so now to get rid of the square, we're going to square root. So I get x minus 3 fourths is equal to plus minus, and I could take the square root of 49 and 16, that's 7 fourths. And I'm going to add 3 fourths to both sides. 
and I get x equals, hold on, I get x equals 3 fourths plus minus 7 fourths. All right, so now we have to finish this up. So I get x equals 3 fourths plus 7 fourths is 10 fourths, which is 5 halves. And x equals 3 fourths minus 7 fourths is negative 4 fourths, which is equal to negative 1. So when this happens, when you get um, uh, an integer and a, a fraction, if you, if you could take the square root of whatever's over here, that means to start off with my quadratic was actually factorable. Okay, but obviously this is not the best way to solve this problem. You complete the square because of the fraction. So you have to be able to identify when is the best way to solve by completing the square. And we'll work on that tomorrow. All right, so flip it over so we can work on uh, the quadratic formula. Okay, so hopefully you remember the quadratic formula. It's x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This has to be memorized. This is not going to be given to you on your final exam. It will not be given to you on your test. So you have to have this memorized. So always put off, uh, put the quadratic in standard form. So put in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. You want to identify a, b, and c. So notice when you use quadratic formula, you don't have to have a is equal to one. So when you don't have a is equal to one, or when you have to divide everything by a and you're going to get fractions, or when you do half of b, you get a fraction, completing the square is not the best way. The best way would be the quadratic formula. All right, and then you're going to plug, plug a, b, and c into formula. Simplify and reduce. All right, so let's look at the first one. Okay, I'm just going to put this up. All right, so I noticed right away that it's not in the right form, so I have to minus 1. 2x squared minus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, let's identify a, b, and c. a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 4, c is equal to negative 1. All right, let's write down the quadratic formula because the more we write it, the more likely we are to remember it. So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, now I'm going to plug in my b. b is negative 4, so it's going to make this here positive 4. Plus minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 over 2 times 2. So I get x equals 4 plus minus. Now this here, just what's under the radical, not the radical. Just plug in the 4 squared minus 4, eight, four times 2 times negative 1 into your calculator and we get the square root of 24 over 4. All right, so now I can simplify the square root of 24. What perfect square goes into 24? That's 4 and 6, so this becomes to the square root of 6. So then I get x equals 4 plus minus 2 the square root of 6 over 4. And then you want to reduce, you want to be able to make a heart. If you can make a heart, then you can reduce it. So is there a number that goes into 4, 2, and 4? Yes, that would be 2. So 2 goes into 4 twice, into 2 once, into 4 twice. And my answer is x equals 2 plus minus the square root of 6 all over 2. All right, let's take a look at number 2. It's not in the right form, so I'm going to minus 6x minus 3. So I get x squared minus 6x minus 3 is equal to 0. So we have uh, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to negative 3. Let's write down the formula. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so I want opposite of b, which is going to give me positive 6, plus minus negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 all over 2 times 1. 
So I'll plug in what's under the radical, the negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, and I get 48 over 2. And that can be simplified. What perfect square goes into 48? That would be 16 and 3, and the square root of 16 is 4, so it be 4 the square root of 3. So I get x equals 6 plus minus uh, 4, the square root of 3, over 2. See if you can make a heart. Is there a number that goes into all three of those numbers? Yes, 2. 2 goes into 6 three times, into 4 twice, and into 2 once. So my final answer is x equals 3 plus minus 2, the square root of 3. All right, so that's it, and we'll practice more on class tomorrow. Have a good night.